So this is my 1983 Subaru MY wagon, um, also known as the Leon or the DL or GL, um, based on where you are in the world. Uh, but we call them, yeah, in Australia, we call them the Subaru MY. Uh, this one's the touring wagon specifically. Um, has the 1.8 liter four cylinder carburetor or carby engine. Um, and being that it's the touring wagon, uh, it's got, yeah, I've got power windows. Um, I have actually got aircon and uh, power steering as well, which I'll show you in the engine bay in a sec. You can't really see, but this one is the digital dash. Hang on, I might try to turn my flashlight on so you can see. That's better. So yeah, this is the digital dash. Um, so it's got the trip computer. It's even got a, uh, yeah, it even tells you like the range and on how many Ks you got till empty. It's got the digital RPM and digital uh, fuel gauge, temp gauge, and even speedo. Yes, that is actually only 118,000 Ks on the clock. It's still the original motor. Being an old engine, it, even though it's got low Ks, it, you know, it does leak oil and other typical Subaru things. <laughs> so, but it, it still runs great. Um, I had this parked up for a good probably year before I started again and you know obviously the battery was dead but you know we sort of just gave it a, a kick in the battery and um, yeah it started up probably very very easily I was quite surprised actually with very little choke involved this is the four speed manual with uh, dual range four wheel drive so yes it is actually um, selectable four wheel drive um, so you got your yeah, two wheel drive or front wheel drive then you've got four drive high and then four wheel drive low and there's like neutral in the middle um, so yes this is actually four wheel drive and it absolutely boggles people's minds when I tell them that and they just sort of go no man it's all wheel drive what are you talking about um, but no I, I can confirm this is actually four wheel drive um, which is pretty cool very unique let's have a look under the bonnet and yeah, being touring wagon, it's obviously got um, air con and we've got uh, power steering as well, which is nice. This one's only, like I said, this one's only done 118,000 Ks. Um, obviously, you know, being an old car, there are, you know, a lot of signs that it is old and, you know, it's not perfect, um, but it's quite clean for the most part. Um, but yeah, like there are, you know, the odd leaks here and there. Um, I can almost guarantee that that radiator has probably never been changed in its life. Um, so when I do get to a point, so even like looking at the belts, you know, um, I would say that, you know, they're probably well overdue for a change as well because they'd be getting brittle, especially after not moving for so long. The jack, yeah, just sort of sits there. And this is normally where your spare wheel goes. Um, mine's in the back though because I'm actually running bigger wheels than standard. I'm running the 14 inch rims, whereas these come uh, on 13 inch rims standard. Uh, the tire size, so I'm running 205 by 60 on a 14 inch rim. Um, I quite like this tire size on them because you know you can deflate them to a good you can easily, being how light it is, if you deflate them to about, you know, like under 10 PSI, um, you get some nice sidewall from them. Um, but yeah, being that it is so light, you really have to deflate these things a lot further than you would of your standard four wheel drive because they are so light. So obviously, yeah, you need that extra weight to sort of get more of the sidewall. Um, but yeah, very light, so really good on sand. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised how capable it is, especially in stock form. Like, um, I've gone to plenty of places that all my mates have in their bigger cars. And yes, I've got a bigger four wheel drive too for the towing and the family trips and that. But yeah, this is kind of like my little, my little baby, I guess. Um, I've had this for a good five years now. Um, and it's, it was registered. Um, not too long ago, actually, it was it was registered probably only two years ago. Um, but I parked it up for a while because I just wasn't driving it enough. And um, situation at the time, I had to um, I was moving around a lot, and I had to park this up somewhere. So 
I just decided to deregister it for a while. So I do want to get it over the pits pretty soon. Um, being that that's the case, obviously I've had to do some things to get there. Um, so originally, and I'll put, I'll put some pics in afterwards, but this is like the rust that was just repaired not long ago. This was done about 12 months ago, roughly. Um, so it's very common for these cars in particular and like the Brumbies and the L series, they tend to rust in, in the bottom of these A pillars here. Like it's very common. Um, quite hard to find one without rust there, to be honest. Um, another spot they tend to rust on these in particular um, is here, which you can see I've also repaired since. Um, the guy's actually done, I reckon, a really good job. Considering, um, I saw, I tried to see multiple panel beaters about this car getting getting the rust done, but to be honest, a lot of them just didn't want to touch it straight up. Like they just saw the car and they were like, nope, I want nothing to do with it. Um, and I man managed to find this one guy and yeah, he's done a great job. And I thought his pricing was actually very, very good for what he did too. So I'm very happy with the results. And what else can I talk about? Um, yeah, overall, the body is, it's quite straight. Um, the paint's actually in very good condition for the most part. The only parts where it would be, I would say needs some improvement is like, obviously you can see in the roof here that it's fading. Um, so that could do with a respray, but like, you know, if you look at like, Obviously it's covered in dust in the moment, but like if you look really closely, like that paint is, yeah, that is still in, I reckon, awesome condition considering how bloody old this car is. Um, yeah, so there's not really, I was trying to see if I can get this open. I've got some crap in the back here at the moment though. Yeah, I've just got some stuff here. Um, but this is the boot essentially. You can actually fit decent size stuff in here. So this is where I've put the spare, obviously. Um, I think that is actually a 13 inch wheel as well. Yes, it is. So that's like generally the size 175 by 70 on a 13 inch rim. That is, I think that is actually the exact size tire that it comes on from factory. Um, I've just put these towers here because I just want to hide this this mess. You know, it's, a, it's not pretty, you know. There's some tears in the seats because you know, they're just old and brittle and I would say in the past, you know, this thing probably did spend a bit of time, while it did spend a lot of time parked in a garage, it probably had its fair share in the sun as well. So yeah, you know, it's um, it's gotten the gotten to the best of the seats. Um, so ideally, for the pits, I can probably just chuck some seat covers on and get away with it, but I would like to get some new or refurbished seats or something in the future. Um, yeah, so, Pretty standard back here, you know, like again, rips in the seat. Oh, that probably needs to be fixed too. Like, you know, there's a switch missing on the power window on that side there. If I get in the back, sort of try to show you how much room we don't have back here. Um, I'm 5'11", and yeah, I know that at the moment the seats are like pretty far back, but you know, it's, it's not exactly a roomy car and you probably wouldn't expect that to be honest. Um, you, you probably, it's probably not a surprise that there's not much room in this thing, but it's great for the, the, the size of it. I think it's a, it can be a wicked little tourer. Um, and you know, they the motors are, so yeah, believe it or not, um, the motors on these are very good in terms of not fast or not powerful, but they they are solid. They're very reliable. They're a dead, dead simple motor. Um, I believe they're like they're gear driven, so they don't have any like you know timing belts or chains or anything. Um, so yeah, very, very easy setup, um, very simple, and you know it's uh, carby as well, so don't have to worry about ECUs, computers, that sort of thing. You know, um, basically just needs fuel and spark, and you're good to go. So from that perspective, very basic and, and great for you know, especially if you're going remote, um, it can be quite nice to you know minimize what could possibly go wrong on the road essentially i'll jump back in here because i've probably missed a thing or two um there's the choke there 
um, good for the cold mornings. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty standard for the most part. Um, you know, like all these are like old and brittle as well. I don't, I don't I try not to touch them too much because like you can kind of see when you touch them, like little pieces of it like fall out. So it's getting old and brittle again. Um, the aircon actually still works, and it is. It's cold, but in my opinion, it's on a 40 degree day. I, I kind of think it's useless. Like all you really, <laughs> I could be wrong, but this is just mine in particular. And I've had a chat with a few of the guys on like the forums and stuff, and like the guys that got aircon in their Brumbies and MYs as well. Pretty much all of them have said that it's not very cold either, even after a fresh red gas and stuff. Um, I'm not actually sure why that's the case. That would probably be a good question for Subarino, who's actually a absolute gun on these cars. Like, yeah, there's no better guy in the game for this, I reckon, personally. Um, but I would say he's got a good or better idea of why that might be happening. If I'm on the beach, it's 40 degrees, and I'm going along it, I probably don't really bother turning my aircon on that high because all I'm really doing at that point is I'm just putting stress on the motor and it just starts to get hot and... If I'm not getting cold anyway, like, what's what's the point of having it on? But, you know, in, uh, I would say on, like, a high 20-ish day, um, it, it does feel like it's still hot enough for it to be useful, but it's also still not quite hot enough where the aircon can run efficiently. So it's really nice um, when it's around that sort of temperature, but, yeah. Obviously, um, Australia's climate is just extremely harsh. Um, yeah, uh, it's got power steering. Um, it's got like this, yeah, old school, original sort of looking steering wheel, which I actually don't mind the look of, to be honest. I quite like it. It's pretty standard, really, but like, yeah, looking at the looking at the carpets, you know, like they're still in really good condition. Like the car in general, you know, it has like these little sort of things here, like these cracks and. In, in plastics and stuff but overall like I'm really happy um, with how well kept it was and I've tried to do the same thing um, the dash was already cracked when I bought the car and again this is another common issue with these cars is they it's very hard to find one that does not have a cracked dash to be honest so dash mat is a good investment if you manage to find one I do have this one though I got this on uh, I either get this from over east, and I'm pretty sure, like, you can even see there, look, it's, even that one is still got a bare hairline looking crack there, but it's honestly the best condition one I've found so far, so I'm just going to roll with it and chuck a dash mat on and it should be fine. You know, it looks better than that. Not that it's any different, but I'm going to jump in the passenger side now and show you. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a bit more of the rust repair there. Um, so, yeah. You can see he's actually done quite a good job there. Um, yes, it's got... One thing I did forget to mention is... Look at this radio. Very old. Um, yeah, I'm in two minds. Do I keep it for its originality? Even though I can't really listen to good bangers. Except for, like, you know, the footy. <laughs> or do I just, you know... Do I just take it out and put something a bit more modern in? Um, I'm still kind of undecided. I might just like, you know, I might just take it out and I won't throw it away. I'll just keep it somewhere in case. I don't I don't really plan on selling this car, but like I still want to keep it pretty stock to an extent. Like maybe not stock's the right word, but original. Um, you know, like I want to add enough charm to it that it still doesn't like come off as oh, this thing's been so heavily modified that it's like you kind of ruined the, the character of it. So I do have some plans for it uh, once I get it over the pits, which admittedly there's not really too much work required before it's ready to do so. Um, it's pretty good for the most part. So yeah, that's um that's the car. Now, I sort of wanted to talk about like some of the things that I want to do with it. Um, so like I said, like I want to still keep it fairly original. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably put a lift kit in it. Just a two inch lift. Just keep it simple. I think the wheels on it now are okay. I may put mud terrains on it like that are slightly bigger, but 
again I don't know if it really needs it because I don't really this is more of like this is probably more likely to say beach than bush but having said if I want the option to go bush it'd be cool but again it's like you know I'm not going to be doing hectic tracks at like Brunswick for example in this thing because like I just don't want to smash it up and destroy it um, it's just to me it's it's too nice to to do that to I think I'd obviously a lot of the and understandably a lot of the Subaru guys would get you know <laughs> pretty mad if I went and banged this up off-road so which is fair enough again um, I'd be pretty devo too if you know there was because there's not many of these around I'd be pretty devo too if like you know someone sort of did that to theirs too but again like everyone's cars are their own each to their own and at the end of the day like nobody can tell you what to do with your car you know what I mean so but yeah my plan in anyway is I'll just put the lift kit in uh, probably keep the wheels on right now but I may consider um, getting some muddies but again still half and half thinking about the engine conversion um, one is if I do the swap with the engine then it's like it kind of might ruin the fact that this thing's only got 118,000 k's on the clock so swapping an engine into it from another car um, I just don't know if I should do that but I know that that's pretty much the only thing that is stopping me from doing it straight away um, because I know that like I said these motors are, are dead simple and reliable but they're also not the greatest power wise you know I think they only make about 80 or 90 horsepower from a factory and you know that was 40 years ago this thing's probably <laughs> it's probably lucky to make half of that now um, so you know there's that but if I was going to go down the engine route swap uh, engine swap route I'd probably go with an EJ22 NA from a early 90s Liberty um, because they have heaps of download torque I've actually owned an L series prior to this which had an EJ22 in it and it completely changed the way the car drove like going from a 1.8 litre carby engine to a 2.2 litre um, fuel injected engine so it had like obviously the ECU and stuff now and the cold starts were just so much nicer it drove way 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 smoother um, plenty of power for off-road especially and being that the car is so light you really don't need any more power than that like I know traditionally speaking it's pretty common to turbo Subarus because of like the you know the the reputation of the Rex and the Forester and stuff and I get it because I mean I've thought about it multiple times myself like oh man this thing would be sick if it was turbo but then I'll uh, maybe it's just me getting old but uh, I start to think man do I need that uh, because NA like it's fine um, but yeah, it's just something I'm still sort of thinking about all the time. So maybe that will be sort of like if I was going to do it, it might be one of the last mods to consider. I'll do everything else first and then I'll see how I feel at the end because I might be okay once I get to that point. Once I've done the lift and the tires, or if I do the tires, then I'm thinking I'll probably put a very, very basic dual battery setup in it. Um, probably won't run like a DCDC or anything like in my other car. Um, probably just a, you know, standard very basic 12 volt set up with a smart isolator and probably just run my battery to the rear I would imagine it's not really much space in here I guess you could potentially put it there that would be not a too bad of an idea but I know it's not really a good idea to put second batteries under your bonnet anyway because they don't they don't like heat first of all um, so I'd probably just run a very basic uh, battery system to the back sort of thing and you know just maybe like one draw or even just not even like you know just some really 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 basic and light um sort of system to store a few things like you know a couple of the essential items like a snatch strap and you know recovery gear and um you know just like those bare necessities that you sort of need because the car's so light and you don't really want to like especially if you're just sort of taking it away for like a boys trip or something on the weekend you don't really want to load it up too much anyway. You want to keep uh, keep your setup pretty simple. Well, I think I would. Um, and with 900 kilos, I think that's about what the car weighs. That could be wrong. Might be a little bit more, but it's not much. And I just don't want to go overkill for that reason because it just 
you know, like you, they're not designed to take a lot of weight and you don't really need to put too much in them. So just a, a very basic dual battery setup in a nutshell and some sort of very basic storage or even just like, a, I might even just chuck a fridge slide in and call it a day because that's really all it's going to be useful is like, you know, lights and fridge and even then it's like a lot of my lights I've got now are like, you know, all portable or head torches and that. So again, it's like, I don't really need it for this car. You know, it's just for the fridge. And then if you go even more basic in that, like really you could just at the end of the day, chuck an Esky in the back and call it a day. But you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a snob now. Like I'm too used to having my 12 volt fridge now. Couldn't go back to the Esky. I know, I know, give me shit. But you know, I just like the idea of not having to chuck ice in it every time. And, yeah, it's, it's nice. Fair enough if you want to give me shit for that, but that's probably about all I would need for the dual battery setup in this thing. And other than that, may do the exhaust. Um, nothing crazy, just, you know, just maybe like a two and a half inch cat back or just something to just give it that little bit of a nice rasp to it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's probably mostly just going to be a sound thing and you might get a little bit more power out of it, you know, help it breathe a bit better, but like, come on, like, it's, it's not like it's going to change anything, really, you know, it's just give it a nice sound and, you know, kind of show off that it is an old school Subaru. Um, because they sound like tractors, man. They, you know, especially these, I feel like every time I start up, it's just got that really, like, it, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. But that being said, my brother-in-law, he's got a Brumby with an EJ22 in it, and he's, Something's been done to the exhaust, but might be the unequal length headers perhaps, but it's just got a very, it's got that traditional box and rumble that most of them have, which I think do sound really good, honestly. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously in my case, like I just don't see why that would be worth the time, but yeah, see what happens. So pretty much, yeah, nutshell would be lift, tires, dual batteries, and maybe exhaust, and possibly engine conversion, but again, like, See how it goes, and then the rest of it's, um, you know, the rest of it's just going to be kind of just restoring it, really, keeping it in its, you know, keep the tasty mods on, but also still show that it's still pretty original. But I'm also not just hiding it in the garage all the time. I'm actually taking it out and using it because, you know, at the end of the day, like it's nice to um, actually drive the car that you really have a passion for. <laughs> Another question I get asked a lot too is once they find out it is actually legitimate four wheel drive they then start asking about suspension questions so they usually the most common one is is it solid axles or is it independent it's uh it's in a nutshell like most all even like most all drive Subarus obviously they're all independent front and rear suspension um and there's been some common some people tend to reckon that they chew through CVs, like front CVs in these particularly. The rears I've almost never had heard of people having issues with, but um, a lot of people tend to blow front CVs. But in my experience over the years of four-wheel driving, I generally only blow CVs if um, basically the boot was already torn and it's already got um, like dirt and all that shit inside it by that point. Um, that's usually when I've blown a CV. I've never actually blown one just by going somewhere, basically, if it, if it didn't already have a an existing issue prior to it, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, obviously, like, these ones seem okay still. Um, yeah, obviously, like, it's a bit, bit mucky down there. Uh, yeah, but I'm still a strong believer of you know, it's at the end of the day, it comes down to shock load. If you're sending it off road, your wheels are on like, you know, if you're fully hammering it to the floor and your wheel hits the ground while that's happening, then it's just going to put massive shock load on it. And yes, you're 100% going to break CVs, but that happens in any car, you know? So I've personally never done a CV in this. Um, and I just don't feel like I need to. Um, it generally for the most part, it just, it's so light. It just kind of just goes where I point it. 
just sometimes you might have to try a couple times if you tackle a tackle a hill climb or something you know but yeah just you just don't need to send it everywhere basically just you kind of just learn how the car drives the more you get used to it and then you kind of figure out how you approach the situation best when you're off-road thanks for watching guys um yeah i've had like i said i've had the car for five years now um i'm kind of finally getting to a point where you know i'm putting some love back into it now it's been sitting here for couple years now and it just needs a bit of attention you know i want to get over the pits and get it on the road again ideally i'd like to get it on some sort of club rego but again like i'm not sure i've heard a lot of different rules about which one you can get and whether you can like still modify the car or not if it's got to be complete stock or um the 90 day rule i don't i don't understand fully i know if in some cases some people are saying like no you can only drive the car to like events and that's it or for mechanical test drives but then other people are saying no you can just drive it 90 days a year but you just got to log the days that you drive it and you're fine so i need to look into that more basically i need to get some more clarity and information on it because yeah ideally i'd, I'd like to get this on club rojo because it's it's not a daily you know it's um i've already got a daily you know well, i've got two so this is like a weekend uh, thing basically um but yeah look into looking forward to actually you know spending some time and you know getting this thing back to what it's meant to do which was be on the road and just be driven and enjoyed so thanks for watching guys and i look forward to seeing you in the next video so yeah um if you got any like ideas or suggestions on like what i should do or what i shouldn't do um please put them in the comments i'm honestly open to any feedback because yeah um the way that i might be doing things might not be the right way um yeah let me know what you think catch you later